Hey, what's going on, guys? It is Brian and Jack with Simple Man's Comics. And getting through the night, got me a nice good cup of coffee tonight. Good old Black Rifle coffee, by the way. But either way, this is the Bolo Show. That's right, the weekly show that goes over all those great new comic book day releases. We're talking about the hottest comics, the first appearances, the reader buzz, the variant buzz. We're talking about comics that you might hear other people talking about a few weeks from now, but we're doing it right here on the Bolo Show, aren't we, Jack? Absolutely, and we have all of that comics coverage coming to you all throughout this um, kind of crazy coronavirus quarantine situation that we're all living in. Um, I hope everybody was able to get their books today, whether you were participated in some of these cool curbside pickups or store drop-off delivery meetup sort of deals. Um, if you were forced to buy your books online, either way, um, make sure you guys are supporting local comic shops. We've got to keep these shops open during some tough times. Yeah, definitely. My Luckily, my shop was still open, went in there. Know the guy, Sean, that's always working there. And it was kind of like, hand sanitizer, hand you my debit card, hand sanitizer, bring it back. All right, see you next week. But either way, great list this week. It was a big list. I was like, holy cow, there's a lot of books on this list this week. A lot of great books. And we're going to get into them right now, starting with those first appearances. Then kicking us off for first appearances this week, we have Spawn number 306. A lot of great covers on this, but this is what? The first appearance of Raptor, right? Raptor. I think um, this was uh, broken early by Key Collector, well before like the normal cycle for books. I think they talked about this a week to two weeks ago, um, that they had gotten some inside information on this. And we've seen this recently, Brian, when there's a Spawn first appearance. It wasn't like this back in the day. Um, where the modern spawn market didn't move like this. Now the back issue spawn market's been hot forever, but the modern spawn market has really started to pick up. Now we're seeing where a first appearance gets um, kind of put out there into the market that this is happening. And Todd McFarlane, let me tell you something. Nobody knows how to sell like Todd McFarlane knows how to sell. This is a, a pro at this game. Um, so getting that information out there was very smart. Uh, people jumped on board. People get excited. So if, 306 was a extremely popular issue. It was a lot of people's sleeper pick. Um, you'll notice in the variant buzz section, we've got that cover D. A lot of people excited about Gunslinger Spawn. That McFarlane cover was uh, the popular cover. Uh, now, Brian's right. There's a lot of nice covers, and there was a lot of covers to pick up. Uh, Virgin cover, great art, all, all the whole deal. You know, you know, you kind of know what to expect with Spawn. But that uh, that Gunslinger cover with uh the done by mcfarlane was clearly the standout the one that people were paying attention to because i think as much as the first appearance is important the return of gunslinger spawn has people extremely excited if you don't know the popularity of that character just check the back issues go see what that first appearance of gunslinger spawn goes for people love that character Right, and then moving into the next book this is probably one of my favorite stories to read right now we've talked about a bunch of times on this channel we're talking about Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle crossover, issue number four, and we got Jack's favorite, a new team, right? Yes, but you know what? I'm loving this team. You can't, I, this is a team I'm all in for, and I'll tell you why. Um, this, to me, has action figures written all over it. This makes me want to have a bowl of cereal on a Saturday morning and sit down and watch oh, it on man. TV. I tell you what, absolutely. Um so we've known about this one for a while, full disclosure. We got, we got tipped off that this was going to be a thing. Um, and, then, and then it's like Boom couldn't c contain themselves, man. They put that image out there early. They wanted everybody to know that this was happening. And what we're talking about is two teams here. We've got the Turtle Rangers and the Ninja Rangers. Essentially, you have a juxtaposition of the Power Rangers and the Ninja Turtles. They've kind of switched spots. So you have a Power Ranger Ninja Turtle team. Um, think, you know, a, uh, a Leonardo as the Blue Ranger, for instance. Um, and then we have a ninja looking uh, Power Ranger team where they're wearing um, costumes very reminiscent. They look like the foot a bit, but very 80s uh, ninja costumes. Definitely kind of super cool looking. And uh, I think both of these teams would make amazing action figures. Now, full disclosure, we've, we've tried to pry from the people at Boom Studios and the people at IDW um, any sort of information on adaptation or action figure line extension things. It seems as though they're still waiting on market information. So 
I'm not trying to say that anything is imminent. I'm just saying that with the success behind those Batman, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles figures at the convention exclusives, um, with the success of this series, both as a Reader Buzz series and just getting significant sales. We've talked about those Goni Montez variants and the collectability of them. Um, the incentives have all performed extremely well on the secondary market. Uh, there was a extra variant here, Brian, like a cover F. Did you see that one? Yes. At first, I was... <laughs> I love all the covers, but I'm not going to lie. <laughs> Maybe I'm just remedial, but I started getting confused about which one's which because it had that great Goni Montez cover, and then there was also that thank you variant, right? Well, the, the normal Goni Montez, then there's an incentive Goni Montez, but then there's also a thank you variant. Right. So they, that's, that's what I like about this Goni Montez set is, is that there's, like, levels to it. So it's like, you know, you have your like your easy to put together set, the, the cover price set, and then you got the incentive set, and then the thank you. Um, so I can't wait to see. I know a lot of you out there have been putting that set together, um, who have been working diligently to build that set. I can't wait to see what that looks like. I like um, when people show their images uh, of their kind of collections. One stands out right off the top of my head, good uh, Simpleman's Comics family member, Ron Jam. Uh, on uh, Instagram, he's shown his Goni Montez collection. It just looks amazing uh, all together. So, and I know a lot of you guys out there have been procuring some of those like older Goni Montez covers because now you've gotten into so you're hitting up that back issue market. Um, so that's awesome. Uh, you know, I think that this Turtles Power Ranger series is a hit. I am a full believer that they're going to end up getting line extensions. There's going to be things coming. Um, so this is a book to keep an eye out for. We have that Power Ranger Shredder issue and now this one. Not a book I think you know, you're going to be looking at as a huge first appearance flip, but one that could be a two, three, four times multiplier of cover price down the road. So definitely a grab and hold for me. And again, I love those variant covers. The, the boom program for variants is, to me, top notch on the market right now. Yeah, I'm also anxious to know. Let us know in the comments if you've read this or any of these issues and you haven't liked it because everyone I know that's read it has enjoyed it. I personally love it, but I'm always talking about how nostalgia driven. So Ninja Turtles, that hits me in the feels. Power Rangers was a little bit later. I was kind of high school, so I'm not as Power Ranger, but definitely Ninja Turtles. Um, everyone I've talked to has enjoyed this so far. So if you've read it and didn't like it, let us know in the comments. Then the last one for first appearances this week is Guardians of the Galaxy number three. And we get a Prince of Power. Yeah, now I haven't read this yet. Now, Prince of Power, when I think of Prince of Power, I, I, to me, that's Hercules from back in the 80s, right? The Hercules, the Prince of Power. Um, and uh, so that's kind of, uh, the, you know, a character, again, a, a title that's been given to other characters. So I don't know if this is one of value or one we should be paying attention to. Full disclosure, I didn't read the issue. I honestly, I read the first issue of Value Inks Run. I haven't read two or three yet. I'm right there with you. Um, yeah, I got to get caught back up. And it's not a, it's just a falling behind thing because I enjoyed yeah, the yeah. first one. Yeah, um, without a doubt, without a doubt. You and I talked about that before we got on the mic here. And that's one of those things when you love comics, like we love comics and, and we're the type of guys where we'll try new stuff, uh, very excited about some new releases that we're going to talk about later. And, uh, you know, you just, you get so much in your reading pile. It gets, you know, to quote my man, Dan Piercy, but you get kind of over, kind of overwhelmed so you fall behind a bit so i'm a little bit behind on this again this is another one all you guys out there let us know and ladies let us know what you're thinking about guardians of the galaxy i think there was another first appearance in there as well as the prince of power um i'd love to know your opinion on the first appearance do, do you think it's a, a, a investment with legs i'd love to know what you think you readers out there how are you feeling these first three issues and that's going to wrap up the first appearance section, but we're going to go right into the reader buzz. Speaking off those reader buzz section, we have those books from AWA. We like, I like to say Upshot. I understand Upshot is just the imprint, but to me, that's the biggest thing that I always see on the book. They're handing them out at the con. They went to Baltimore. They were talking about Upshot. So yes, AWA, but all intents and purposes, I'm referring to it as Upshot. And we're starting with Resistance number one. This was a big book that we talked about during the last call. I picked up all these Upshot books. I've only been able to read one so far. Time constraints from today. Keep in mind, this is recorded Wednesday night, but Resistance seems to be the one that's getting a lot of buzz. 
Yeah, so what we're going to do is we're going to talk about all of these releases kind of here all at once. So we're talking about, of course, Resistance, Red Border, Hotel, and Archangel 8. Um, there is a lot of anticipation for these releases. We talked about them on the last call show right here on the Simplements Comics YouTube channel. Um, I think they're going to be slow burns. I think part of what's going to hurt their immediate secondary market um, value is what's going on in the country. I just think that the distribution of comics is going to be a little slower. Um, I think there's going to be a shortage on books in about a month because I think retailers are going to order less. But I think right now there's going to be almost an overage as retailers don't have, not every retail shop is open. Not every retail shop, if you ordered those extras for the shelf, they're able to move those. So there's a good thing this week is you don't see this happen, happen very often at all. Was it Tuesday night? Not, uh, Diamond sent an email, no communication out saying, hey, you can start selling your books today. Yes. And I, and I would expect to see that continue. I think that, you know, in these kind of times, everybody's got to help everybody. We've got to kind of uh, be a little easy on people and, and do what we can do. So making it as flexible and easy for a comic shop to get their comics out is, is a good thing. Um, I also question, and I, I qu this is not a hot take. It's just something I've been wondering since these books got solicited. Did you say hot cakes? I like hot cakes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Hot cakes. I'm hungry. Coffee. I'm always hungry. <laughs> but the strategy of releasing four new number ones from the same publisher on the same day can be very good if you have a lot of momentum. Um, it can be very bad. And I don't know that this went into the very good category. I don't know that it went into the bad one, but kind of like what you were talking about where you said like resistance is getting a lot of talk talked about. I think yeah. this is the, the topic. One can um, outshine each other. And then two, budget always comes into play with people. Exactly. So um, you see, if you're looking at this list, like this is a large list. Um, there was a number of books. And again, this is your list. This is what you're talking about. So this, this, this list is big. It's not, everybody's list isn't this big. And everybody's list has books that aren't on this list. But if this gives you an idea of what a person, if you just look at the reader buzz section, and you were to say, well, if you picked up one of each reader buzz, and maybe just a couple variants here and there, you know, obviously you're looking at a hefty uh, comic book bill. So a lot of people, I think, were looking at this uh, for these four books and probably making a selection of one or two um, certain books. I haven't heard. I've heard the resistance and Archangel eight talked about consistently the most, and then hotel and red border, almost not at all. Um, and again, I think that could change over time. I like all of these books long-term because I think that this company has a lot of big names, a lot of people who know what they're doing. They're going to put a lot of effort into it. Their marketing efforts in Baltimore were very good. Brian, you and I know, that so much of what goes into independent comics is you going out there and hustling them yourself. And uh, th this company seems to have that, but uh, it may take some time. And it may take some time because of, like I said, what's going on in the country. It may have been um, a misstep, their release um, schedule. Uh, and it may just be like a lot of independent comics. It takes time for people to trust a new brand. Uh, people have been burned by labels before. So, uh, I am optimistic about these four titles. I hope that they do well. I root for everybody in the comics industry. But all you guys out there, Sibelman's Comics family, let us know. Did you pick up these, uh, these AWA Upshot titles? Did you like them? Which ones did you pick up? Let us know all that information in the comment section. We would love to hear from you guys. Um, and and if, you know what? We've asked you guys to comment a couple times. We're going to go ahead and do this mid-show, Brian. We're going to do a giveaway this week. Uh, we've got some variants to give away. Uh, we've got them from a couple of people that we've worked on. We'll do some of these CBSI variants. And we'll do a variant from Frankie's Comics. So let us know in the comment section, and we'll go ahead and send those out to uh, one random commenter. Um, we, may, we may mine for more information from you guys. All right. I will tell you. I didn't read Resistance, but I did read Archangel number eight. And mostly because I'm a big Michael Morrissey fan, wrote that. I, I, get, I posted on Instagram today. I got the, the Morrissey trifecta. I got that new Wasted Space and new Star Wars Adventures, the, the IDW one. Um, if you like Garth Ennis' Punisher run or Punisher Max, you'll definitely like 
Archangel number eight. Now that, that just has that vibe, that feel to it. Great first issue. I mean, it was, it's definitely in for mature, so don't let the kids get to it. But I enjoyed that. I'm looking forward to reading Resistance and Red Border and Hotel as well. But moving on into the reader buzz, the next one we're talking about is X Force number nine. Pick this one up. I read seven. Seven was the a big one, right? Mm -hmm. And X Force number eight. Enjoyed X Force number eight. Kind of killed some of the buzz on some of it. Haven't had a chance to read number nine. I've always said I'm not a big X-Men fan, but X-Force is one title that I tend to like to read. Yeah, I'm not loving the various X-Books, but X-Force has been my favorite. It's always books. been like one of the best, to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's, well, it's the cooler. Um, it tends to be like the cooler characters. Yeah. Um, a little bit grittier. Know. Yeah, yeah. You can take more liberties and risks. But this is all about Honey Badger. If you're not familiar with Honey Badger, Honey Badger. <laughs> See that old YouTube video. <laughs> now watch this. Look, a snake's up in the tree. Honey Badger don't care. Honey Badger don't give a shit. It just Honey Badger don't care. <laughs> Honey Badger um, gained a lot of popularity with the creation of all new Wolverine. Of course, Laura Kinney X-23 as Wolverine. Um, first appearing in that all new Wolverine number two. Uh, very popular character, dominated that run. I think her name is Gabby. Um, dominated that run. All her covers did well. Everything involving her did well. And then it's like the character disappeared, and you started to see a lot of that buzz die down. Definitely could have been on the three down section of a list on a given week. Not that these books haven't had value, but they haven't been paid attention to. But when the solicit mentioned that Honey Badger is coming back, it seemed like people were very, very excited. Um, and that's always going to drive reader buzz. People get excited you know, first appearances don't carry long term, or it's not a first appearance. First appearances are the ones that carry the long term weight. But when you see a popular character return, it's always going to drive people to comic shops to pick up an issue. Yeah. So, like I said, I'm still anxious to read number nine. But moving on into the next one, Ghost Spider number eight. Too many books on this list. I say that in a good way because there's a lot of books. I definitely went past my budget, which is a big no-no for me, but I picked a couple extra books. Ghost Spider number eight was one of them. Another one that I've really been enjoying, but what's been the buzz on this one? Same thing like we just talked about, return of a character, the return of Gwenum. Um, and we talked about this one going into FOC, um, that this was going to be something to pay attention to. We talked about Gwenum on the- um, Three up, three down. Three up, three down. Um, so, yeah, Gwenham is back. We knew this was going to be a popular issue to pay attention. This series has been a sleeper. People have enjoyed it. Um, you know, I talked about my trepidations with it going in because I'm such a loyalist to the old creative team. But, you know, I've enjoyed this run. Um, yeah, shout out to my guy, Adam, uh, from his the YouTube channel, Strange Tales to Collect, who really kind of like hammered home, no, you need to be reading this after I kind of lapsed for a few issues. Um, but you know, it's just one of those things, uh, again, character returning, extremely popular character that already connects with an audience. And then what helped is there got a lot of buzz on the Peach Momoku store exclusive, where it's like an homage to her, uh, her ghost spider variant that kind of like put her on the map, that selfie cover and it featuring her as Gwen on that, that store exclusive um it's rare that a store exclusive makes that kind of an impression on the secondary market but these ghost spider store exclusives are selling just ask our channel sponsor frankie's comics yeah he was actually just selling um he had a couple sets of all three up there recently really it sold out quick though <laughs> but he had the um the one with the trade dress mm -hmm. the mast and then the unmasked he had the set of all three up there i forget wow. what it's going for i think it was 90 bucks yeah, well, be on the lookout right now for Frankie's Comics because they've been putting up some new books, uh, Some obviously with some convention um, cancellations. They've had to put some of their books that were supposed to be exclusive for convention stock up online. That's a great opportunity to pick up some books you probably wouldn't have had access to otherwise. Yes, and also check out the show sponsor, SlabTerrors.com. He's got a lot of great books up there as well, especially those Guarantee 9.8s. And like we said, support your LCS, support we like to shout out our sponsors because they are great people, great companies. That's why we enjoy working with them. But either way, both those frankiescomics.com and slabbedheroes.com, great sites to check out and help support those people, especially with the times that we're in right now. But moving on, the next one we're getting into the reader buzz. Finally, a book that I didn't look forward to picking up. And this one, 
that I've kind of fallen off of, but there's some great covers on this one and one that we really like in Captain Marvel number 16, right, Jack? Yes, yes. Captain Marvel number 16. This is the end all be all battle Fox versus Captain Marvel. Also, this is a big issue because I, Marvel's doing a really shitty job of marketing that legacy numbering series, in my opinion. DC has figured out how to do it, but this is the 150th Captain Marvel issue. And you really wouldn't know it other than they made the legacy number a little bigger on the on the cover. But they should they should should have been a, a landmark type issue for them. But you mentioned variant cover, uh, friend of the channel, uh, you know a guy that we've had some awesome interactions with and watched get just bigger and bigger and bigger um, is you know social media sensation boss logic. Um, he. You know, when we talked to him a couple of years ago, he hadn't done any covers. He was about to do his first Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cover. And he was very direct and said that, you know, it was his dream to do Marvel and DC covers. Um, and it's funny because his t style of art, that digital art, wasn't always respected. So that seemed far-fetched a couple of years ago. Here we are in 2020, and the most talked about variant for this book clearly is his variant. You've got both the the trade dress um, open order variant as well as the virgin incentive. And, uh, you know, it's really cool because not only is it a knockout cover, right? It's the standout awesome cover. But I hope it opens the door for further Boss Logic covers because his work is outstanding. It is, a, a, it is definitely not a traditional art style. Don't get me wrong. I'm a traditionalist. Jim Lee is my guy. But... Um, I still think that the way the, the new school guys are doing it is, is still awesome and entertaining. And it's cool to see Boss Logic, a guy who's already been, um, you know, Disney already has commissioned him to do things like, you know, the Infinity War poster and things like that. So it's only logical we get him doing variant covers. Right, and then the next one was definitely a major Reader Buzz book this week, and that was Nightwing number 70. Yeah, and see, this one's getting a mixed response because it depends on why you bought it. Yeah. so Some people might have been let down a little yeah, bit. People were upset because of the punchline stuff. The punchline craze, people, the assumption, really, that punchline was going to be uh, a part of this book. When the reality is, I, this is a book I had pre-ordered because I think this Joker War is going to be a big story. Um, and I don't, I wasn't anticipating when I pre-ordered it, this being a book that was going to sell out today. This was more of a, I'm going to put it in sets. Because if you look when DC has had very popular storylines, some of the most expensive books, think about Dark Knight's Metal, if you remember that, are the offshoot issues. Now that Teen Titans issue obviously had a first appearance of Batman Who Asked, but do you remember the Green Arrow issue? It was like Green Arrow 33. It was like some random Dark Knights tie-in. But because it was, you know, Green Arrow isn't heavily printed, but 100,000 plus people were putting Dark Knights metal sets together, that book became a $20, $30. It was a Nightwing issue as well. So in thinking of that, I was like, all right, well, if this is going to be a big storyline, cl classic Joker cover, um, I'm going to pre-order this. So I was happy with it because, I, you know, I'm excited for Joker War. Uh, Dark Side War, we talked about that on Three Up, Three Down. That was a uh, great storyline. So I'm thinking this is going to be kind of in that sort of a vein. Uh, but, you know, people that were playing the punchline game, they may feel some sort of way. My reader buzz people um, who are looking at this as kind of an overarching Gotham story um, probably weren't disappointed. Right, and then we're going to move over to an indie book. And what was it? Alterna Comics. The yeah. Thunder Realm number one, volume three. Yeah, if you're not familiar with Alterna Comics, Alterna Comics um, is run by, and I may mispronounce his last name. I apologize, Peter Cementi. Uh, Cementi, uh, he is very active on social media, very controversial at times on social media. He is, but I, the reason why I appreciate a guy like that is he's one of those disruptors in the comic market. He's a guy who wants to do things differently. And his goal is to get comics in the hands of readers and to get them in there as cheap as possible. He basically circumvents the secondary market, although his books have become popular 
on the secondary market at times. His, um, the biggest selling point for all Alterna comics is that they use newsprint interior paper. And if, what is newsprint interior paper? It's 80s comic book paper, essentially. Yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, if you told, if you've ever read an Alterna comic, if you told me tomorrow all comics went back to newsprint, but they would go to the price of Alterna comics, which their average selling price is about $1.50, I'd be on board, Brian. Because to be honest with you, I just don't think you're losing. Um, and, it, and there's a very nostalgic feel you get with Alterna comics. They and it's, it. it's smell. I mean, they yeah. would talk about smell, but yeah. Yeah, and there's a direct-to-consumer approach, too, that they take. Um, the the owner will often post videos on Twitter and YouTube of him packing up subscription packages for customers. They have a very loyal fan base. Um, you know, it's so it's one of those brands that, you know, it's not something that I, I don't read all their books, um, but I, I enjoy watching the hustle. And again, it's like James Hake with the binge series with Scout. Um, you know, it's like the boom guarantee program. I appreciate any publisher who's going out there trying to do something a little different, trying to find a way to penetrate the market. Um, and this series, Blood Realm, has been a consistent popular series with readers. It's the one that people tend to highlight. If you're an Alterna Comics like Die Hard and you're trying to sell me on why I should be reading Alterna Comics, Blood Realm tends to be the series that's talked about. Also, their back issues have spiked on the secondary market before. There was a time where I want to say like the, I don't know what they're currently selling for and they may still be selling well, but at one point the first prints for uh, the first volume were selling for like $15 for number one, $10 for number two. They had gone to later prints on the books. Um, and uh, again, with the newsprint and the old, it's tougher to keep them in good shape. Um, very similar again to like an eighties comic book. So you know, if you've never read an Alterna comic, it may be something to check out because, again, cheap buying price. Also, other cool thing is they do trades in like a soft cover, almost 100 page spectacular magazine format, and they do trades for five bucks. So you can read a whole volume of a, of a comic um, for five bucks. Then moving on, the next one, the Reader Buzz is that great spy comic and bang number two. Yeah, and specifically the Matt Kent variant seemed to be the one that everybody was paying attention to today. But bang, bang, you knew it was going to have um, the attention of the market. Bang number one was a big hit. Uh, the second print for bang number one was popular. Yeah, I think it's already gone to third print, right? Third print, I think, comes out next week, as a matter of fact, uh, um, is already being talked about. Uh, so, you know, it's one of those things. Uh, I think we'll see some reader buzz for the first few issues. It'll be interesting to see how much they can maintain that. Um, I, I, I think the option news certainly helped them. Right. And then the last one in the reader buzz is Batman number 91. Just like Nightwing, this is another one that kind of upset a few folks, I guess. But either way, I'm still loving Tenian's run on this, and I was excited to pick up Batman 91. Upset them for no great story. Upset them for no reason, though. Upset them because they made assumptions. Yeah. Like you said about the great story. Uh, we knew Punchline was in 92. She was in... 89 that's just an assumption that she was going to be in 91 um it was everybody's out there trying to play guessing games yeah, they're um, all ass ooming here's the thing did you see how hard they marketed punchline in 92 like do you think they wouldn't have done that if she was in 91 um come on boom. again people need to just Enjoy this for what it is right now. Tinian's crafting a good story. Um, it may be a little overrated at this point because of all the craziness. Yeah. But but I'm still I'm still excited to see where it's gonna go. Yeah, I'm along for the ride. Yeah. I'm not too high, not too low. I like Tinian's ride. <laughs> Tinian's run. I like I like Tinian's run so far, but you know me, I'm kind of meh on the whole punchline thing. But yep. Either way. The grumpy old man of comics. <laughs> grumpy old man. Yeah. It wraps up the reader buzz section. We're going to go right into the variant buzz.
First one up on the variant buzz is Spider Woman number one. This had a lot of great covers as well. There was also a secret variant for this, right? Yeah, which was maybe my favorite variant um, that they released for this book. I think that was a, it's a good looking variant. And I think it was smart. Uh, we haven't had one of those cool secret variants in a while. And they, there's a few variants similar to it where it's like you get the different costumes Spider Woman's worn. I think in general, the variant program for this book was very good. The Chip Kid variant, those have done very well. The blank variant, although again, high ratio, so that's stupid. But, you know, I think obviously we've talked about the popularity of, of those blank variants. Uh, you, you got a J. Scott Campbell variant. You've got an Art Germ variant. You've got a Peach Momoko variant. I don't like, and I've warned people about this, that the, the fact that there's multiple, there's like three 125 variants. Um, that's something you always have to watch out for. Uh, it's an indicator of a, that books will be depressed market-wise, and specifically, maybe not the Peach Momoku, but some of the other ones. Uh, the other thing is, why would you not do a store exclusive for this? And this is where we've tried to educate a lot. We've talked a lot about the store exclusive game. We've tried to pull that curtain back and show people what that process looks like. Um, so if I do a store exclusive for this, regardless of how many I say the print run is or how many people are signed up to a program or anything, the reality is you're going to do th you're going to have a 3000 book order. That's what Marvel is going to do. That's the minimum order for a Marvel variant. So you order 3000 books. We've talked about this before. You, when you start looking at the ratio variants, you are going to get a lot of ratio variants. Um, and sometimes I don't think people understand, you know, when you're talking about a one in 25 peach Momoko, um, you know, do the math. If you're sitting there with a 3000 book order on, on what your stack of peach Momoko variants looks like. So I, that's why we saw the number of store variants that we've seen for this book. I do think that will affect the ratio pricing. Um, having said that, I think Marvel did a really good job on this book in general on um, the covers. I think the covers are consistently, this is one of the better books. And I, I, I think Marvel's, honestly, I gotta give them credit where credit's due. This book, Gwen Stacy, Black Cat, I think they've done a really good job in something that I was initially cynical about, saying like, oh, this is all cover grab. And it basically pretty much is, but they've done a really good job putting out covers that people get excited for. Yeah, and I'll actually say, this Momoko cover, I actually thought it was a really good cover. There's a lot of Momoko covers out there that I think is riding on that name. The, in my personal opinion, I don't like a lot of Momoko covers. To me, I see the same art walking down the hallway of my kid's third grade classroom. <laughs> it's got that. Tell them how you feel, Brian. <laughs> That's just me. I, the, there's a couple Momoko covers I do like. I will say that. But for the majority of it it looks like uh, it, it's just not my style so kudos to that i liking it kudos to that i mean no denying those covers are in demand right now and people are selling them but i'm not a big moco fan jack is though no 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 <laughs> no no i'm in the indifferent crowd <laughs> but either way we're, we're definitely getting comments on that yeah. but uh Moving on into the next variant buzz book is that Robin 80th anniversary variants. Now, here's another thing. We've talked about how much we like these decade variants, right? I liked some of these Robin variants, but this is one that I actually say there's a couple of them that I was like, it was easier for me to pick just one this time, put, put it that way. I, I agree um, that this was a weaker selection. Plus, it, it, am I wrong in saying I don't think they assigned decades to them? Yeah, I think that was kind of the problem. So instead, they tried to go with, um, you know, say ten or whatever, how many variants there was. Uh, you know, good cover artists, and again, they did a good job with their cover artist choices. There's some great covers, but uh, I think not tying them to the decades kind of took some of the nostalgia. Now we still got some of that, right? We still got some great homages. Uh, we got like that that uh carrie kelly kind of like frank miller homage we got like that classic first robin uh homage but yeah 
definitely easier to leave a few on the shelf um, than typical. It's interesting seeing though which ones are selling out. Like Midtown sold out of the Tortino variant, the Carrie Andrews variant, um, and the Carrie Andrews is always good. He's Dustin Wynn variant sold out. The Putri one was pretty nice too. Yeah, the funniest thing is it's not the ones maybe like I would have super paid attention to. And Robin's not as popular, so I think they needed to go a little harder. Yeah. Moving on to the variant buzz. Now, here's the next one. We talked about this one heavily during the last call. And we're talking about that Bitterroot number seven Boys in the Hood homage variant. Yeah, Brian, we, we were definitely on this one from the get-go. The moment we noticed that Bitterroot was going to be doing these covers – we immediately knew that this was going to connect with an audience because first off, these homage covers are consistently popular. Secondly, all you have to do is look at what the typical kind of monthly orders. Yeah. There's a low print run on these. Right. For bitter root, you knew that they were going to be low. This was very reminiscent of an IDW or a boom variant spec play. We knew this was going to work. Also, they're kind of classic movies from our childhood, even though maybe like it's not meant to connect with you and I the same way, because these are obviously these are classic African-American cinema uh, films that are being selected for these um, incentives. But also, again, full disclosure that, you know, the uh, friends of the channel, uh, the, the creators of Bitterroot, we've ha- had the opportunity to cover a panel for them and, and, and to do some interviews. They're great guys. So it's already a book in a team we root for. Um, so we were paying attention to this one early on. No surprise to see this one be a big secondary market winner. I think this trend is going to continue. These variants are switching from incentives to order all you want. And I know a lot of people are going to be negative about that, but I think that that's a good thing because that'll push people away from them. Um, you won't see maybe the ridiculous spike in price, but again, like the, there's just not enough quantity being ordered to cover the demand that these books will receive. Yeah, number eight's a sweet Purple Rain homage, right? Yes, and again, I said this to you when I first saw that cover. I said, name a Purple Rain homage that hasn't done extremely well in the secondary market. Yep. But either way, moving on, we have Deadpool number four. I actually like the regular cover on that on this issue, but no doubt the one in 25 Philip Tan variant's badass as well. Yeah, it has a Del Otto feel in my opinion you get a little craven the hunter a little deadpool this is kind of the badass version of deadpool depicted on this cover so um the black background the fact that i don't think people are ordering deadpool heavy yeah um but so. even like if you walked by cover a and your lcs this week I, you had to like stop and look at it and go man that's kind of a cool cover not right. buying it but that cover is pretty cool yeah yeah no doubt um so you know it's i think I think this one could be a sleeper long-term because Deadpool has a lot of long-term collectors. People who, what I mean by that is there's a lot of like. It's like the Garbage Pail Kid Deadpool cover. and the. Well, it's like, it's like there's a lot of character collectors yeah. for, for Deadpool. There's a lot of people who they collect Deadpool books. So I think a lot of these will get bought and then put into personal collections never to be seen from again, which will make the supply of them dwindle over time. Um, so this is one to keep an eye out for kind of long-term. And the next one is Wolverine number one, second print instead of one in 25 variant. We've kind of talked about this on this channel, right? I'm, not, I'm still not a big fan of incentive second prints, but either way, I, I'm not going to lie. I did kind of like this cover as well. Yeah, cover's great. But again, what about the second print regular? Is anybody talking about that? Have you seen one person post that? <laughs> the second you create these, these second print incentives, you – completely burn the actual second print so i don't like it um i wish we would as a market would stop buying them i'm glad that they've slowed down um but that, again that's the difference between marvel and dc right um punchline is the hottest thing in the world we can't even get dc to do anything but a recolored freaking book marvel would be doing like four incentive covers for the third print like <laughs> like that's just the difference in the companies <laughs> pretty soon they're going to have redemption covers like in cards to send this right. in to get your <laughs> yeah yeah but at, it's funny you say that but like i'd take a rede- imagine getting a redemption card if you open up a book on an inside of the redemption card you send it in for a cgc autograph that'd be awesome yeah but 
And then the last one we're talking about, Variant Buzz. Another great story, fantastic covers, but this is something that's killing the children. Number six, and this had two Jenniferism variants, right? As well yeah. as a thank you variant. Yeah, this one just went super under people's radar. Um, typical indie situation, you're on issue six, people aren't paying attention. Um, so like the thank you variant, I think got massively overlooked by people on the market. I, you know, But we've talked about this before. In an issue like this, where the order numbers will be what they are, there may be more thank you variants out there than there are those one in 25 variants. And the, those one in 25 variants, remember this is Jenny Frizen. This is an artist who's becoming an A-list artist who has a lot of people collecting all of From a publisher that's getting a lot more attention within the past year. And I'm also going to make another point. The fact that they did the, the incentive in the style they did gives more validity to the store, I believe it was Scorpion Comics. I could be yeah. completely wrong. Yeah, who did that store in Sanctum? No, it was um, Sanctum Sanctorum. Sanctum Sanctorum. Sorry. Yep. My apologies, Sanctum Sanctorum. That's who did it. So Sanctum Sanctorum did that store exclusive for number one in the style that Boom then used for number six. So that makes that number one to me much more important because they're going to look they had, they had a foil for the for it as well right yep yep a foil version because it sold so it sold so well um but yeah it, it's funny the the fervor that the market had for that jenny frizen number one they didn't seem to have for number six now don't get me wrong number one's a better cover than number six not because frizen didn't do it as well just the, the outline and design um but nonetheless i think the truth is most people didn't know this cover existed yeah. So it'll be interesting to see over time how this cover does. I think this is a sleeper. And another another great story written by James Tenney. And this is another one that I've been loving reading. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. This is, a, I said this to multiple people. I think Erica Slaughter, the main character in the story, is the coolest character that got created in 2019. Yeah, I like that character way better than some of the characters. Recently. Erica Slaughter over Punchline. That's what you're saying. <laughs> but <clears throat> in the black lung pop. Either way, hey, that's the variant buzz section for us. Comment down below. Big list this week. Let us know what books you guys picked up. Let us know what you're reading. Let us know what books you picked up that weren't on the list. One of the books that I picked up that weren't on here, personal favorite of mine, Wasted Space from Vault. Love that story. Highly recommend it. If you haven't read it yet, but with that being said, we're going to get into Jack's long-term play. And this week coming up for Jack's long-term play, a big book from Marvel, we got Outlawed number one. Yeah, and you know, this is a straight rear buzz book here, and we're going on some deep long-term play here, guys. I mean, this is not a book, this is not a book that I think was on many people's radar today. This is not a book I think is going to be on people's radar in the short term. But I, this is what I love about this section of the list because this is really apropos of where this book kind of should land because this is a story and a kind of group of characters that is really all about the future. This is the future of Mar Marvel Comics. On top of it, the elevator pitch for this story alone just makes sense. Well, tom of tomorrow, new legislation comes out, says you can't be a superhero unless you're 21. What would happen overnight to all of these teenage superheroes that have existed in the universe for years? We're going to get a lot of crossovers. Okay, this is not, Marvel's going large with this. And I think when we first started talking about it, Brian, I don't think we anticipated. I'm still not reading Power Pack. And there's new warriors. Did you see that? I saw the new Warriors get announced today, and my initial reaction was, oh, my God, Brian's going to hate this. <laughs> that was, that was the, literally the first thing I thought when I started reading. So we've got characters like um, there's two non-binary characters. Um, one, I think, is called Snowflake, and one is called Safe Space. So, like, we're going there. Um, I saw, and it's funny, I saw people talking about it today, and I thought that, I was like, wow, I can't believe they said that in their post, but I didn't realize that that's what the character were That called. it is legit, yeah. I, I, it's funny you say that, that's exactly how I saw it, was I thought people were being maybe inappropriate. Yeah. Um, I'm, I, you know how people can be on social media? And I was like, oh, wow, this is really what this is called. They're going there. Um, so this is going to be, that'll be interesting, because that'll get buzz no matter what. But yeah, we've got a new Warriors series. There'll be a Power Pack series. Um, 
there's gonna, it's gonna cross over with Miles Morales, Spider-Man, it's gonna cross over with uh, Ghost Spider. So if you're reading any of those series and Magnificent Miss Marvel, you're already gonna get some of this outlawed story. You kind of might as well jump on the one shot. So you at least understand what's going on, the premise of everything. Um, I think for that reason, this book is important. Um, secondly, you know, did this is an opportunity to give second life to some characters like Power Pack and New Warriors who haven't had um almost 20 years I feel like it's been since we've had those characters kind of prevalent and now granted this is a new new warriors team but that's another thing to keep an eye out for there's gonna be some first appearances throughout this um and this one shot while not f featuring first appearances that's not what this why I think this is important um I think this is important because these characters these primary characters Miles Morales Camilla Khan the younger Nova um Sam Alexander I think these are characters who are going to be featured prevalently going forward in the MCU. Um, and we see these storylines mined constantly. Um, we're used to Claremont era stories, right? And ending up in the movies. We're used to that. But when you start talking about Camilla Khan, when you start talking about Miles Morales, you don't have 30, 40, 50, 60 years worth of stories. So I think people haven't gotten accustomed yet, Brian, to the idea that the stories we're going to see on the screen tomorrow are being written in the comics today. And I think Outlawed on premise alone, but I think the first issue delivered. I think it got me excited to read more. I'm actually surprised you read it, and I'm surprised you read it, Brian, and then didn't want to read Power Pack. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm still not on the Power Pack. I'm not saying I'll never, I won't say never, but I have no interest as of now. But yes, I did read Outlaw number one. And there was one of those ones I was kind of torn on, right? Because mm -hmm. I didn't like love it, but I actually enjoyed it. It was one of those ones we talked about before we started filming tonight where I was like, hey, did you read it? And you're like, yeah, we kind of discussed it. It's one of those ones where like, hey, I didn't really love the issue per se, but I enjoyed what it, where it went. But I'm more excited of, hey, where is this going to go? What's the storyline right. going to do? Um, it was enough for me to say, I, I would give it, out of 10, I'd, I'd give it a 6. I enjoyed the first issue enough to, to not, like, hate it. Yeah, <laughs> but I, see, I, I was would a wild it, by it. I would give it as a straight read a 7, 7.5. But it, that's the thing is that's not why this, like, valuable. It's valuable for the reason you said, which is that it, it kept you intrigued to read more. Um, I think this is going to be a major storyline that we are talking about over the summer. Yep. And I think by the time people realize it, if a Miles Morales issue takes off, if a Magnificent Miss Marvel issue takes off, these outlawed number ones may not, may not be available. Now, I will say I hated the incentive art for these. I mean, I just think yeah. they messed, these incentives were just subpar compared to some other stuff. I like the wrap around order all you want variant. I think that's a cool variant. That's the one I picked up. That's the that's the cool one because that shows all of the young characters. So you get an idea right there of all the characters that we could see featured um throughout this storyline. So what we think we know about this storyline could not even be um everything we're gonna see. And the whole element in this storyline that's kind of cool is the whole idea of like I don't know if you've been reading like some of these younger books. I think they're going to get into this in Champions, which this is also going to cross over with. But, you know, Amadeus Chow leaving to go with Agents of Atlas and how that's kind of affected his relationship with these characters. Um, so, again, I, I'm bullish on all of these characters. I know you guys are, too. You guys, Let's be honest. You guys are buying all of these characters' first appearances. You can look at the secondary yeah, Viv record. Vision, Miles right. Morales. Viv Vision, Miles Morales, Spider-Gwen, uh, Amadeus Chow. Amadeus Chow as Hulk. Uh, Amadeus Chow as Braun. And this definitely puts the spotlight on Miss Marvel. Yeah, yeah. So I will tell you this from reading this and then talking to a buddy at work who watches this channel as well. He's like, hey, I watch your videos. I can't believe you don't like Magnificent Miss Marvel. The story's so good. And I was like, I've just never been drawn to that character. So with this story and with that, I think I will try to make time to go back and read at least Magnificent Miss Marvel. Yeah, so there you go. One more pitch right here. Again, we've got a little contest, a little giveaway. We're going to give away some variants to try to keep you guys um, engaged throughout this 
uh, coronavirus quarantine process. So let us know what series Brian and I are sleeping on. Have you heard us talk junk about a series that maybe we need to be getting on? Uh, does Brian need to get on this power pack? Uh, let us know in the comment section. There's another opportunity to get a good comment. And we guys, we love to hear your feedback. So uh, we're willing to bribe you in comics for it. Also, one other thing, you know we're big fans of indie comics on this channel. We have two great videos coming up, two creator spotlight videos. We have the creators of Canto, David Boer and Drew Zucker. We got their video coming back, talking about Canto, what's coming up with that. They got a, a one shot as well as a new series, but we also have someone else. We have another creator spotlight video coming up, don't we, Jack? Oh, absolutely. We just wrapped that one up. We're talking about Frank Gogol uh, from Source Point Press. We're talking his upcoming book, No Heroin, as well as the kind of far and away success that uh, Dead End Kids was and uh, talking about all those changes in his career over the year. So two great interviews, two great friends of the channel, Frank, uh, Frank Ogle, David Boer, uh, Drew Zucker, really excited to bring those to you guys. These are also um, books that we're excited about, books that we uh, personally think are going to are gonna do well and we, we want to bring to you guys, the Simple Men's Comics family. Um, so be sure to check those out. Give those uh, um, a view and, and see if you need to add those to your pool list. Um, we're talking about a lot of great stuff in those videos. Yes, because the, the trade volume one for Canto comes out next week, right? Yep, Trade Volume 1 comes out next week. Uh, um, previews are available right now for the Clockwork Fairies, the one-shot. Again, we're going to talk about it in the video. A little spoiler now. Yep. It's a 1 in 10 and a 1 in 25 incentive, so be on the lookout for those. Um, and then more coming with the next volume. Yeah, so make sure you subscribe to this channel and click that bell so you'll be notified when those videos are published. With that being said, this is Jack and Brian from Superman's Comics. We'll see you guys on the next video.